Okay, this is the fourth video, uh, and this accompanies lesson 11.3 in your book, which is about inscribed angles. And in general, the, the rules are pretty simple for angles dealing with circles. However, the, what gets complicated is when you have a lot of angles drawn on the same circle, uh, you have lots of angles that are formed and it tends to, to become a little more difficult. But let me give you the background uh, and the rules that go along with this lesson. It's pretty simple. Uh, we've already had a uh, central angle. If you remember, a central angle uh, is an angle whose uh, vertex is the center of the circle. So you follow it out this intercepted arc. Uh, if it's 100 degrees, the arc measure, then the central angle is the same exact thing. So in this case, the central angle measurement is 100 degrees. Okay, we talked about that in the very first uh, lesson. Uh, now we're going to have what's called an inscribed angle. And an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the center of the circle, excuse me, is on the circle. And when you extend it out, its sides contain chords, okay? So this is a central angle. This one is an inscribed angle. Uh, part of the last lesson, we didn't, I didn't put it on the video, but it talked about what it means if uh, you have an inscribed polygon where all the vertices are on the circle. So in this case, you've got an inscribed angle. That vertex for angle one is on the circle and its sides contain chords. So if you take a look, it makes sense that the angle measurement would be less than 100 degrees when you stretch it out, or if you're taking that point and pulling it this way. And in fact, it's cut in half. So the rule is uh, the measurement of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So if you follow it out and this is 100 degrees, then the measurement of angle one would have to be 50 degrees. So pretty easy. Central angle is the same. The inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. Okay, uh, that's the main idea. And then there are a couple of corollaries that go along with that. If you remember, a corollary basically takes a theorem and goes one step further and says something extra. Uh, let me give you one of those corollaries right now. One of them says, if you have two inscribed angles with the uh, exact same intercepted arc, they have to be congruent which is, is pretty obvious here. If we draw this, we've got angle one, whose measurement would have to be 40 degrees. And then let me put angle two on here. Let me put angle two way up here. So here is angle two. And if you follow it out, it intercepts the exact same arc. So it would also be 40 degrees. So the corollary says that if you have two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc, they have to be congruent. So you can conclude that angle one and angle two are congruent. Okay, that is one corollary. Another corollary deals with a semicircle. All right, so remember you can find half of a circle by looking for diameters. So if I have this diameter, and then I have an inscribed angle, we'll call it angle three. Well, if you follow it out, well, it intercepts half the circle. So that's 180 degrees. So angle three automatically then has to be 90 degrees or a right angle. So the corollary says, an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle, okay? And then the last theorem, uh, our last corollary is a little harder to, to, to understand, but I think we can get through it. Let me try this. It says the opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle are supplementary. So we need a quadrilateral of some sort. It does not have to be a parallelogram or anything special, just any four-sided figure call this angle one and angle two. It says that the opposite angles have to be supplementary. Okay, the reason being, let's take a look at, remember this all comes from our main idea, our theorem, our intercepted or inscribed angles theorem. If you follow out angle one, this is your intercepted arc. Okay, let me switch to colors. Now let's follow out the opposite inscribed angle, angle two. If you follow out angle two, you get this intercepted arc. If you put those two intercepted arcs together, look what you have. You have the entire circle. And since the entire circle is 360 degrees and you're doing inscribed angles, you would take half, which would make them 180 degrees or supplementary. So once again, the opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. Okay, and then the last theorem, it's slightly different. It's, to me, it's kind of like an inscribed angle, but it's slightly different than the official definition. The official definition of the inscribed angle says you have to have um, 
the sides that contain cords. This is slightly different, but the rule works the same way. So this theorem says the measure of an angle formed by a tangent, okay, so we're gonna call that one's a tangent, and a chord, okay, so that angle, we'll call it angle three, is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the rule works the same way. You follow it out and you look at whatever this is. So let's say that that is 200 degrees. Then the measurement of angle three would be half, so it's 100 degrees also. So not technically an inscribed angle because you've got a tangent there instead of a chord, but the rule works the same way, whether you've got two chords or if you've got a chord and a tangent. All right, and that takes care of the, uh, all the concepts in the lesson. And like I told you earlier, what gets more complicated is you start to see a circle that might have, oh, I don't know, there's one more angle, and then let's put another angle on it. You see all of those angles that are formed? And that's where it gets fun. So we'll, we'll do a couple of worksheets uh, coming up there. You've got lots of angles you've got to work your way around. And you just have to be careful. And sometimes you can redraw it and just focus on what you need. But the key to being able to do these is figuring out all of the missing arc measures. So if I'm doing a big picture like that, I would figure out all the arc measures first and then start answering the questions or then start finding all the angles. Okay, and you'll see what I mean when you start practicing those. So we'll see you next time for 11.4. Uh, and 11.4 has two different parts to it. It has the rest of the angle stuff, and then it also talks about finding segment length. So we may do one video, we may do two on that one, uh, but, but we'll see how that goes.